All right, get ready because we're diving into the Love is Blind season seven reunion. You guys send in a ton of articles about what went down and wow, there's a lot to unpack here. We've got a surprise baby announcement, some pretty scandalous texts floating around, and even a groom who had some trouble with his pants on his wedding day. Sounds like this season really brought the drama. Oh, absolutely. So where do we even begin? Let's start with Ashley and Tyler, the couple that had everybody talking. Okay, yeah. Right before they were supposed to get married, Tyler reveals he's actually already a dad. Oh, wow. To not one, not two, but three kids. Through sperm donation, it was a huge shock. That's a pretty big bombshell to drop right before you say I do. I mean, Ashley and Tyler, they fell in love in the pods without ever seeing each other. Their whole relationship was built on vulnerability. And then suddenly this huge part of Tyler's past comes out and it changes everything. Right. And you can see Ashley's reaction in the reunion trailer. She's like all over the place. One minute she's defending Tyler. The next she's saying she was totally blindsided. It really makes you think... What would you do if your partner dropped a bombshell like that right before your wedding? Oh, man. I don't even know. It's such a tough question. On the one hand, you have this deep connection with someone, this commitment you've made, but then you're hit with this totally new information that completely changes the dynamics of your relationship. And the whole thing sparked so much debate online. Everyone's trying to figure out how involved Tyler actually is with his kids, which he hasn't really talked about publicly. Right, right. It's like this whole other layer of mystery on top of everything else. I mean, it really makes you think about what full disclosure even means in a relationship. You know, what are the things we absolutely need to know about our partners before we commit to spending our lives with them? Totally. So despite all the craziness, Ashley and Tyler actually did end up getting married. And in the reunion, Ashley even said she's open to having more kids in the future. Wow, they're really committed. I know, right? It's fascinating to see how their idea of a happy ending has evolved. They're embracing this unconventional family structure, and it seems like they're both determined to make it work. That's really great to hear. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other season seven couples because there is so much more to talk about. Remember Brittany and Leo? Yeah. They just kind of fizzled out once they were out of the pods. It's interesting how that happens, right? Like in the pods, everything is about that emotional connection. But then you add in the physical aspect and suddenly things can change completely. You're right. It's like all these new factors come into play, physical attraction, chemistry, even just basic compatibility in terms of lifestyle and interests. Exactly. Oh, and speaking of compatibility, let's not forget Monica and Steven. Remember those um, kinky texts Monica found on Steven's phone? Oh, yeah. Yikes. That was rough. It's a classic example of how different expectations around communication and boundaries can really cause problems. Exactly. What one person sees as harmless flirting, another person sees as a total betrayal. And in a relationship that's built on being completely honest with each other, those kinds of misunderstandings can be really tough to overcome. For sure. And then we have Nick, who said that now famous line about wanting to contribute equally to the relationship. Oh, yeah. You have to admire his commitment to equality, but it definitely started a whole debate about gender roles and expectations in relationships these days. Right. And it's a conversation that's happening more and more now. As those traditional ideas about relationships change, couples have to figure out what partnership really means to them, both financially and emotionally. Absolutely. Okay, now let's talk about Alex and Tim because their relationship was basically a ticking time bomb. They had some of the most intense fights I've ever seen on Love is Blind and their breakup was pretty brutal. Yeah, they really struggled. What stood out to me was how different their communication styles were. It was like they were speaking different languages. Totally. And they both had these insecurities that just seemed to fuel their arguments. It felt like they weren't equipped to handle conflict in a healthy way. That's something we see a lot, both on the show and in real life. Even when two people genuinely care about each other and have good intentions, if their communication styles clash, it can create a disconnect that's really hard to bridge. So true. Okay, so we've talked about some of the couples who didn't quite make it down the aisle, but season seven did have a few success stories. Oh, good. Marissa and Ramses, they seemed like they were going to go all the way, but they ended up splitting up before the wedding. And then there was Taylor and Garrett who managed to work through some serious drama. I remember the whole thing with the ex's DMs. Oh, yeah. And they actually ended up getting married. It's interesting how some couples seem to actually thrive on the intensity and the drama while others fall apart under pressure. Mm. It makes you think about how much personality and temperament play a role in whether a couple can handle the unique challenges 
of finding love on a reality TV show. It's like a social experiment in real time. It's exactly. And speaking of experiments, we can't forget about Chelsea and Jimmy. Remember their amusement park date? Oh yeah, that was fun. Their whole relationship felt like one big roller coaster ride. It did. They had these crazy highs and lows. They seemed like they were constantly on the verge of either imploding or exploding. And then there was Clay and AD. They seemed to have a real connection, but ultimately, Clay got cold feet. He just couldn't go through with the marriage. AD was obviously hurt and angry, which is understandable. It really highlights how important it is for couples to be on the same page about commitment. When one person's ready to take that leap and the other one isn't, it throws everything off balance. Yeah, and it makes it almost impossible to build a solid foundation for the relationship. Exactly. And of course, we can't forget about AD's brief fling with Matthew after things ended with Clay. It's like the drama never ends in the love is blind universe. It definitely keeps us entertained. But beyond that, it's really interesting to see how these people navigate the ups and downs of love, rejection, and the pressure of trying to find the one in this really unusual setting. It's true. Okay, so we've talked about the couples who either tied the knot or totally flamed out, but there's one more storyline from season seven that we need to mention AD's relationship with her mom. Oh, right. Remember how tense things were between them all season? Yeah, they definitely had their differences. It's a good reminder that family dynamics can play a huge role in our romantic relationships, you know? Oh, absolutely. Oh. If there's unresolved conflict or you don't have support from your family, it, it adds this extra layer of stress to a relationship. Right, especially in the love is blind environment where everything is so heightened. It's not just about the couple finding love with each other. It's about dealing with the expectations and opinions of their families and friends, all while being filmed for a national audience. Yeah, it's like they're living their lives under a microscope. That'd be <laughs> tough. Okay, so we've covered a lot with season seven. Before we move on to some of the most memorable moments from past seasons, let's rewind a bit and talk about the one couple from season six who actually beat the odds, Amy and Johnny. Oh, I love them. Remember them, they're still going strong, they've even blended their families and they seem so happy. They give me hope. Their story is like a ray of light in the often chaotic world of love is blind. It shows that you really can find lasting love through this experiment, even if the odds are stacked against you. Totally. It's yeah. so inspiring. And it makes you think about what really matters in a relationship. You know, is it just looks and shared interests? Or is there something deeper that connects two people on a soul level? Great question. Okay, we've talked about the highs and lows of season seven, and we revisited the one shining success story from season six. So now let's take a trip down memory lane and revisit some of the most iconic moments from Love is Blind history. I'm talking about the couples who broke our hearts, the ones who made us laugh, and the ones who just left us wondering what the heck just happened. Sounds fun. Let's do it. Get ready because it's about to get juicy. But first, I want to hear what you remember most about Love is Blind. Hmm. What are those moments that have stuck with you, the couples you rooted for, and the ones that left you totally speechless? Okay, let me think for a second. Take a moment and reflect on what Love is Blind means to you. What have you learned from the show? What questions has it raised for you? How has it changed the way you think about love and relationships? That's a really good question. All right, time to pause and think. We'll be back in a flash to unpack some of those most memorable moments from Love is Blind history. Okay, so are you ready to relive some of those unforgettable Love is Blind moments? Oh, I'm ready. It's amazing how some of those couples and their stories have stuck with me. It's true. The show just knows how to get you emotionally invested. You laugh with them. You cry with them. You get so caught up in their journey. Even when things don't work out, you find yourself thinking back on what happened and what they could have learned from it. Okay, let's start with season three. That season gave us some truly iconic moments. Like Raven and SK, their relationship was wild from the start. Remember how SK initially said no at the altar, but then they got back together after the show? Yeah. It was such a roller coaster. They had this undeniable connection, but they were also dealing with those big cultural differences and the challenges of a long distance relationship. And then, of course, there were those cheating rumors that led to their breakup. It was sad to see it all fall apart so publicly. It just goes to show that even the strongest relationships can be vulnerable to all those external pressures, especially when you're living your life in the public eye. Okay, now let's talk about Jackie, Marshall, and Josh. Talk about a messy love triangle. Oh, man, that was a lot. <laughs> it was interesting to see how their communication styles and emotional needs created this whole tangled web of relationships. 
Jackie seemed drawn to both Marshall and Josh, but for different reasons. And her struggle to choose between them played out in a very public and dramatic way. And I felt for all of them. They were clearly caught up in a whirlwind of emotions, and the pressure of the show just amplified everything. It's like the show creates this pressure cooker where everything feels so intense. And when you throw in multiple love interests, well, it's going to be messy. And speaking of messy, we can't forget about Bartiz and Nancy. Their wedding was explosive. Bartiz's speech at the altar was brutal. Yeah, that was rough. Their relationship really highlighted how important self-awareness and emotional maturity are in a relationship. Mm. Bartiz seemed to be struggling with his own insecurities, and he ended up hurting Nancy in the process. Yeah, that comment about not being able to picture Nancy as a mother was just awful. It showed a real lack of sensitivity. Words can really hurt, especially in a situation where emotions are already running high. We have to be careful about how we communicate, or we can end up causing damage that's hard to repair. Okay, let's move on to a couple that gave us all the warm fuzzies, Alexa and Brennan. They were fan favorites right from the start. Their relationship just radiated genuine love and support. I loved them. They were so great. Their story was just this beautiful testament to the power of shared values, mutual respect, and understanding each other's needs. They navigated those cultural differences with such grace and humor. It was clear they were building something really special. And seeing them start a family has been so heartwarming. They're proof that you really can find your happily ever after on Love is Blind. They're like the ideal outcome of the show. Two people who connect on a deep level, embrace each other's differences, and build a life together based on love and trust. Now, let's talk about Zanab and Cole. Their relationship was a roller coaster. There were those sweet moments, but they also had those blowout fights. And Zanab's speech at the altar, wow, that was powerful. It was. It took so much courage for her to stand up there and speak her truth. She really called out Cole's behavior and emphasized the importance of self-respect in a relationship. She didn't hold back. And it sparked a really important conversation about the subtle ways women are sometimes made to feel less than in relationships. Her words resonated with so many people because they spoke to this universal experience of feeling diminished or disrespected by a partner, even if it's not always intentional. And Cole's reaction, well, his lack of reaction, really, just underscored how important accountability and self-awareness are in a relationship. It's not enough to just have good intentions. You have to be willing to examine your behavior and how it affects other people. You're so right. And that means being willing to listen, to empathize, and to be open to feedback, even if it's hard to hear. Okay, now let's talk about Colleen and Matt. They went through so much, but their commitment to each other never wavered. They were inspiring. Their story was a reminder that communication, compromise, and the willingness to work through those tough emotions are so important in a relationship. Their wedding was one of the most emotional moments in Love is Blind history. Their tears of joy, their vows, it all spoke to the depth of their connection. It was just beautiful. It was a reminder that love can be healing and transformative, and when two people are truly committed, they can overcome anything. Okay, let's go back to season two now. A whole new group of people brought even more drama and laughter. Season two kept us on the edge of our seats with its unpredictable twists and turns. It really made us question what love and compatibility are all about. First up, we have Mallory and Sal. They had this undeniable spark in the pods, but once they were out in the real world, things got complicated. What were your first impressions of them? Well, they definitely had that magnetic pull towards each other, but there were some red flags too. Mallory seemed to want adventure and spontaneity, while Sal was more into stability and tradition. And then, of course, there was Jarrett, which added a whole other layer of complexity. Oh, yeah. Jarrett's lingering feelings for Ayana definitely created some tension and insecurity between Mallory and Sal. It was a factor in their decision to break up at the altar. It was heartbreaking to see them split, especially knowing how much Sal cared for Mallory. But I think they made the right choice. They weren't on the same page about their future, and staying together would probably just lead to more heartache. It's true. Sometimes love isn't enough. You have to have shared values and goals to make a relationship work. Now let's talk about Deep D and Shake. Their story got everyone talking about self-worth and those relationship red flags. Shake's comments about not being physically attracted to Deep D were just cringy. It was uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. His behavior was a reminder that we need to look beyond just superficial attraction and appreciate our partners for who they are on the inside their intelligence, their kindness, their emotional depth. Deep Dee choosing herself over Shake was such an empowering moment. It reminded everyone that we all deserve to be with someone who truly appreciates us for who we are, 
inside and out. She was amazing. She handled everything with so much grace and strength. She became a real symbol of empowerment, showing everyone that it's okay to walk away from a relationship that isn't serving you. She showed us that it's more than okay, it's essential to put your own happiness first. Her story started a lot of important conversations about how societal beauty standards affect how we see ourselves and others. Okay, next up, Shane and Natalie. Their relationship was this crazy mix of passion and arguments. It was hard to tell if their love could survive all the drama. It was intense. Their journey showed just how hard it can be to navigate communication breakdowns and deal with insecurity in a relationship. Shane needed constant reassurance and affection, while Natalie valued her independence and space. And that huge fight they had the night before their wedding, it showed that they just weren't communicating effectively. They couldn't resolve conflicts without resorting to hurtful words and accusations. Classic example of how unresolved issues and unhealthy communication patterns can create a toxic cycle. And then, of course, Natalie called off the wedding at the altar, leaving Shane heartbroken and confused. As hard as that decision was, it showed that she was committed to her own happiness and wasn't going to settle for a relationship that felt unstable and uncertain. Sometimes walking away is the bravest and kindest thing you can do for yourself and the other person. Let's talk about Nick and Danielle. Their relationship had those heartwarming moments, but it also had some intense emotional blow-ups. It seemed like they were in love, but their anxieties often got in the way. They were a good example of how challenging it can be to manage mental health struggles in a relationship. They seem to be carrying a lot of emotional baggage, and it often affected how they interacted with each other. They had those explosive arguments that often stemmed from misunderstandings and projecting their own fears onto each other. It showed how important it is to seek professional help when you need it, to develop coping mechanisms for stress and anxiety, and to learn how to communicate effectively, especially during those heated moments. It's a good reminder that relationships require effort and understanding. You have to be willing to work through challenges together. And sometimes, even when you put in the effort, it's just not meant to be. It's okay to acknowledge that and move on. Speaking of moving on, let's talk about Ayana and Jarrett. Their journey began with a love triangle, but they ultimately chose each other and seemed happy, at least at first. Their story showed that forgiveness, second chances, and the willingness to grow together are possible. They were honest and vulnerable about their past, and that helped them build trust. But as time went on, their differences in lifestyle and what they wanted for the future became more and more apparent. They realized they were heading in different directions, and they chose to prioritize their individual happiness and growth even if it meant ending their marriage. It was mature and respectful. They recognized that sometimes love just isn't enough to make a marriage last, and it's okay for people to evolve and grow in different directions. Their story reminds us that relationships are always changing. It's important to regularly check in with yourself and your partner to make sure you're still aligned. And finally, let's talk about Deeply and Kyle. Remember their surprise romance after the show. After choosing herself over Shake, Deep Tea connected with Kyle, who had always admired her. It's like a real-life fairy tale. It was a twist. It shows that you can find love in the most unexpected places. They started as friends and built a strong foundation of respect, and that blossomed into a romantic relationship. It was so heartwarming to see. It reminded us that second chances are out there, and sometimes love finds you when you least expect it. Their story highlights how important it is to stay open to new possibilities and to let yourself be vulnerable even after going through heartbreak. Well, that was a trip down memory lane. We've seen the highs and lows of love, the challenges that relationships bring, and the never-ending search for connection in this crazy world. From those first dates in the pods, to the weddings, the breakups, and the unexpected reunions, Love is Blind has given us a glimpse into the messy, beautiful, unpredictable world of human connection. It's a show that has started so many conversations about dating, relationships, and how we find love in the digital age. So we've talked about all the Love is Blind drama. Yeah, from the season seven craziness to all those wild moments from past seasons, it's been a lot. It really has. And it's made me think about how Love is Blind makes us look at our own ideas about love and relationships. Right. It really challenges those old school ideas about what makes a couple compatible. Yeah. You think about it. Yeah. They're falling in love without even seeing each other. It's so true. It's like the pods strip away all that superficial stuff, looks, job titles, all of it, and make you focus on what's really important. Exactly. That's what makes it so interesting. It asks the question, can you really build a lasting relationship just on that emotional connection? And the answer seems to be, well, sometimes you can. 
We've seen couples like Lauren and Cameron and Alexa and Brennan who found real lasting love through the pods, but then so many others just couldn't make it work in the real world. It makes you wonder what the difference is. You know, what makes some couples succeed while others fall apart? Is it their personalities, their communication styles, or maybe it's just luck? Maybe it's a mix of all those things, but Love is Blind definitely gets us talking about what really matters in a relationship, what we're looking for in a partner, what makes it all work. It really does. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest lessons from the show is that self-awareness is key. Knowing what you need, what your values are, what you absolutely won't compromise on those things are so important when you're trying to build a healthy relationship, whether it's in the pods or in real life. That's such a good point, because in the end, no matter where you find love, whether it's on a reality show or at the grocery store, the foundation of a strong relationship is the same. Exactly. It comes down to communication, respect, empathy, and being willing to grow together. And maybe a little bit of drama along the way. Oh, definitely. Let's be real. Everyone loves a little drama. Mm. So that wraps up our deep dive into the world of Love is Blind. We've seen love, heartbreak, and a whole lot of moments that made us think. But don't stop thinking about it now. Keep those conversations going. Talk about the power of vulnerability, how important communication is, and how love and relationships are always evolving. And if you ever feel like you're drowning in information, you know where to find us. The Deep Dive is here to help you sort through it all and make sense of things. Until next time, happy diving.